Hello everyone and welcome back, and as many of you know, um, it is now time for Junicorn as it is June. So what we're going to do today uh, in honor of Junicorn is we're going to design eight unicorn subspecies for eight different biomes. So this should be a whole lot of fun, so let's get started. All right, so I was definitely way more inspired to partake in Junicorn than I was for Mermaid, simply because unicorns generally don't have any human component, so they are more my jam. However, I wasn't feeling particularly inspired by a prompt list, especially since I can never seem to stick to them anyways, so I decided to go my own way with the unicorn theme. Hence designing a unicorn for the major land biomes. I went with tropical rainforest, savanna, desert, chaparral, temperate grassland, temperate forest, taiga, and arctic tundra. To design each unicorn, I selected three prey animals that could be found in the respective biome and blended them together with the traditional features of a unicorn. The main design features I wanted to keep consistent were the tail with the long tassel fur at the end, the fluffy legs, the mane, and of course the single horn. After I went through and selected which animals I wanted to use for each biome, I did quick thumbnails for all of my designs so I could get a general idea of what I wanted. While I wanted them all to look like they belonged to the same family, I wanted to make sure each unicorn had a unique silhouette and adaptations for their environment. The first unicorn I tackled was the Tropical Rainforest Unicorn. For this one, I chose to incorporate the features of a tapir, an okapi, and a mouse deer. This one gave me the most trouble because while I really wanted the legs to be similar to the mouse deer, it was actually really difficult to draw. I think it was because the upper leg of the mouse deer kind of blends in with its body and is covered by fur and tissue, so it was difficult for me to visualize how everything was supposed to connect. I did the best I could, and while it is a little wacky, I do like the end result, and it came out pretty close to my original idea for it. Of course, I could not resist basing the coloration primarily off the okapi because, come on, so fancy. We are here for some stripes. Admittedly, I was a little discouraged by how difficult this unicorn was to figure out, but once I pushed through and finished it, I felt like a huge weight was off my shoulders. Which was ridiculous because I still had seven unicorns to go, but I knew that the other designs included animals I was more familiar with, so I rightfully assumed it was going to be mostly going to be a pill from there. Um, I imagine that this unicorn is very petite and light-footed, probably the most shy of the unicorns I designed for this little project. Since both tapirs and mouse deer enjoy swimming, as far as I know, I think this unicorn would as well. It probably feeds on vegetation both on land and in the water and would be fairly agile in both environments. Since stealth is a priority for these guys, I think they'd be mostly solitary. Next is the savanna unicorn. Obviously the main influence for this species was the black wildebeest, but I also added in characteristics of the zebra and common warthog. After my struggle with the rainforest unicorn, this one was a simple joy to design and I took the opportunity to relax and get my confidence back up with some more familiar anatomy. I really prefer drawing solid, chunky animals, so this was more up my alley. In contrast with the rainforest unicorn, I imagine our savanna species is extremely ill-tempered, and I don't know what y'all think, but I just feel like it's probably very stinky. I don't know, I look at it and I can just smell dirt and cow poop. Uh, being out in the open, these guys would be more herd-oriented than the rainforest species. Their diet would include not just grasses, but also roots, berries, and sometimes bugs. Whereas the rainforest species would rather run than defend itself against predators, the savanna species is scrappy and will fight if they have to. I can also see them killing young predators if they happen to find them unprotected while foraging. I figure it's worth mentioning that you're going to notice a trend with these guys as far as coloration. I know I tend to choose more outlandish colors for my creatures more often than not, but I was really feeling making these unicorns more realistic than my usual creatures. To that end, I opted to base their colors off of the animals I incorporated into them, so they're mostly going to be brown, tan, or gray. I actually really enjoyed working with natural colors for these guys, and I feel it helped to ground them into reality and make them seem more plausible, which again, was my intention. We have 
have the Desert Unicorn. For this one, I used the Camo Adex in the African Wild Donkey. Not gonna lie, I was a bit intimidated by this one because of the Camo aspect. They are weird creatures, but once I dove in, it wasn't as difficult to incorporate the Camel features as it was with the Mouse Deer features in the first unicorn. Size-wise, the Desert Unicorns are between a donkey and a camel. While the savannah unicorns are straight up mean, the desert unicorns are mo more so sour or grumpy. Um, they are very liberal with the spit, of that I am certain. Unlike our last two unicorns, these guys could potentially be domesticated, but I'm not sure if it'd be worth it since I can imagine them being very salty about it. It would take a certain degree of respect to get them to do anything without exacting revenge in some form. For example, if somebody they didn't like tried to ride them, they'd probably go out of their way to make sure they hit their rider against every tree, rock, and thorn bush on the way to their destination. Just petty little things like that. I don't think they'd have many predators and just feed on whatever desert vegetation they can find as there isn't enough out there for them to afford to be picky. The dark spots on their elbows and knees are fleshy padding for when they lay down. It's hard to tell, but I did intend for them to have luscious eyelashes, second only to my husband's, to protect their eyes from the sand. Their feet are more padded than the other unicorns, and they have dew claws hidden in their leg floof for added stability and more unsure footing. This guy is tan colored, but I imagine they come in shades of cream and white as well. Aside from the hump, I think the desert variety is the closest to the traditional unicorn. Our fourth unicorn is the chaparral species. This one combines the mouflon, bezoar goat, not sure if I'm saying that right, and a jackrabbit. I didn't have many prey animals to choose from that looked really different, so that in and of itself was quite challenging. I wasn't sure how to make this one very unique, especially since anatomically the mouflon and the goat are so similar. Um, adding in the jackrabbit ended up being what saved me from making this too much like either of the hooved animals in the mix. It's hard to tell, but this is the only species that has more than two toes in the back. Um, if it were standing, you'd be able to see how big and splayed out its back feet would be, but I chose this pose simply because I wanted something a bit more action-oriented. I love a standing pose, but we needed some variety in here. This species is short and scrappy. They spend most of their time in the more rocky regions of their biome where it's harder for predators to get to them, but in times where food is scarce, they will venture down in herds to more flat terrain to browse. Their gait is unique among the other species of unicorn as they tend to hop to get around. Their kicks are very powerful and are their main mode of defense. Their horns are mostly for show, but RIP to the predator they managed to hook on that thing. And lastly, their big ears help with heat dissipation.
Next is the Temperate Grassland Unicorn. This one is a mixture of the Bison, Pronghorn, and Shavosky's Horse. I wanted to get at least a couple of big boy species in the mix since we already have little guys and medium guys and this is the first of the Tonker species. I love the prehistoric look of the species. Obviously the Bison influence is strong in this one. These guys are extremely hardy, and while they're mostly found in grasslands, they can also occasionally be found in temperate forests. The forest populations tend to be darker colored. For the most part, they're very chill as long as you don't get too close, in which case you'll find out they're a lot faster than they look. They live in herds and are very protective of their young since they don't have them as frequently as the smaller unicorn species. They are highly adaptable to the temperature and can survive in extreme cold and extreme heat, often enduring wide swings in weather in the same day. They are about the same size, if not a little bigger than bison. Our sixth entry in the unicorn lineup is the Temperate Forest Unicorn. This one incorporates the elk, moose, and eastern cottontail. I intended for these guys to look very large, but ended up looking more like a donkey-sized little guy. We'll just say that the rabbit part sized him down a bit. I didn't want this guy to look too similar to the chaparral species, even though they both incorporate leopards, so um, I tried to emphasize the elk and the moose. The jackrabbit mostly came in through the, not the jackrabbit, the eastern cottontail mostly came in through the ears and coloration. These unicorns tend to be mostly solitary, though you may spot them moving in small family groups consisting of a mom, her adult daughters, and their babies. These guys are aggressive if you get too close to the babies, but otherwise prefer to stay out of sight and run if they spot you. While mostly forest dwellers, they can also be found in temperate grasslands and taigas. They eat whatever vegetation they can find, both on land and in water, like moose. In tough times, they will strip the bark off of trees as well. Their horns are great for scooping aquatic vegetation out of the water, and babies are born shades of reddish brown and slowly gray out as they age. Super old individuals may turn completely white.
and next is the taiga unicorn. This is a combination of a reindeer, a wild boar, and a red squirrel. Again, I was short on prey animals for this biome, and I didn't want to use anything I'd already used, so I picked some more outlandish choices for this one. I was honestly super skeptical about how this was going to turn out, especially with the red squirrel thrown into the mix, but it turned out to be one of my favorites. This guy is super simple, but also majestic in all its floofiness. Their fur makes them look more chunky than they actually are. Under all that, they're very slender and tall. Like the temperate forest species, they can be found in biomes other than their main stomping ground, including temperate forest, arctic tundra, and temperate grassland. Populations that live in the open tend to be more herd-oriented, while forest populations are more solitary. This one has uh, an average-sized horn, but I imagine the older the individual, the bigger and more ornate the horn. The really ancient ones probably look like forest deities, especially since these guys are the tallest out of all the species. They are mainly grass eaters, but because they're so tall, they can also reach foliage that the other unicorns can't. While they will run if you get too close, they also seem oddly curious about people and have been known to stand and observe humans until they get too close for comfort. And finally, our last unicorn, the Arctic Tundra Unicorn. Of course, this biome had the absolute least amount of species for me to choose from. The muskox and the doll sheep were some of my only choices as far as hooved animals, so I had to go really out of the box with the third animal. I ended up choosing a lemming, and it came through mostly in this unicorn's coloration as well as its potato shape. These guys can also be found in taigas and sometimes grassland. Their diet consists of grass, moss and lichen, and sometimes woody plants, similar to the muskox. In spite of their tank-like build, they are shorter and lighter than the temperate grassland species. While mostly calm, they can sometimes be grouchy in times of food scarcity and have been known to run off competitors for food, even other unicorn species. As this was the last species, I will confess I was getting really tired at this point. I spent the least amount of time on these guys, but looking back at them, I still like how they turned out. They look like really big guinea pigs, and I can just imagine how cute the babies are. Little poofy potatoes. Maybe I'll draw them one day, who knows. And that's it for this little unicorn project. I had so much fun designing all these species and coming up with little blurbs about them. I would love to do this again with another mythical creature at some point. Um, maybe dragons for smogist? We'll see. By the way, if you're interested in how I colored the line art for all these unicorns, I actually have a video on how I do that, which I will link somewhere around here. If you enjoyed the video, don't forget to leave it a like and subscribe for more creature design and art-based videos. I'm trying to post at least once a month at this point, and also drop me a comment to let me know which unicorn was your favorite as well as if you have any ideas for behavior characteristics or general lore for these guys. So thank you all for watching and I'll see you all in the next one.